once a week, every week for the past nine years, they start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These people are volunteers at a mobile food pantry in the rural community of High Springs, Florida, north of Gainesville. Miss Anna? Yes, ma'am. That bag I took in the place is that tomato sauce I made for you. Oh, thank you I so much. I put it in the refrigerator. Thank you so much. Bishop. And we've got everybody working inside. Anna James runs the pantry. There was a time before the pandemic when she knew the name of every person or family in need, every person or family suffering through food insecurity. Back then, they were serving about 250 families. How are you doing today? All right, we wait right there and I'll get you your bread. You want to hear or not? On next All right, we'll see you Bye. next Wednesday. Have a blessed weekend. The need is so much greater now. We've served up to 1,300, but our average is 900 a week. That families. So, mm -hmm. That's more than triple. It is. It's, it's, it became huge. And then thank God for Bread of the Mighty Food Bank, who increased our little mobile pantry into something that we could serve a large number of families in need. The Bread of the Mighty Food Bank is 20 miles south in Gainesville. It is a massive warehouse and distribution center serving five Florida counties. So you call this the showroom? This is the showroom. This is the only showroom like this in the country at a food bank. What you see in the middle with the pallets is what people usually have, but our 190 plus agencies come in here and shop the shelves. Karen Wolfstead is Director of Communications and Development. Tell me the difference between what you're seeing now and what you're seeing, what you saw pre-pandemic. We had a record year distributing 8.4 million pounds of food. This year, over 18 million pounds of food. So many new people getting food. I mean, that number is, it's, it's staggering. It is. We agree. Hunger is on steroids. There is very little you can't find here to fill the need. There are boxes and boxes of bananas, macaroni, toilet paper, plenty of eggs in the walk-in cooler, smoked turkey breast too. What we do is it, we take it out through 190 nonprofit agencies that come here, get the food, take it out in the five counties where people live. That's what we do. The food and household supplies come from farmers and supermarkets and places like Walmart. Behind me here, these yellow containers, they came from Amazon. And over here, 38,000 pounds of food came from the Mormon church in Utah. The Amazon containers are opened and the contents sorted by hand. Jarrell Johnson says you're never sure what you'll find inside but every bit of it will fill a need. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's worth it. Oh yeah, cause we feeding people, you know? Not just here in Florida, but everywhere across the United States, people are going hungry in record numbers. And every number has a face. These days, the faces of hunger are behind a mask. It's rural areas like High Springs, it's big cities like Austin, Texas, where a dozen rows of cars are lined up each at least 25 deep. It's college towns like College Station, Texas. Here at the College Station pawn shop, they've set up what they call a blessings box. The sign sums it up. Take what you need, leave what you can. So, Having this blessings box, which holds non-perishable items, you know, toiletries, canned goods, you know, dry food, allows us to at least extend that to our customers and just say, look, if you need some food, let me give you a bag. Take some groceries from our uh, blessings box, you know, no cost to you. Just take it. Hopefully it helps you out. The Feeding America Network is the largest hunger relief organization in the United States. They partner with 200 food banks and 60,000 food pantries across the U.S. Their statistics show that in 2018, 14.3 million American households were food insecure. 
meaning limited or uncertain access to enough to eat. That was then. At the beginning I was okay, like the month of August and September, and then October came in and I was like, I can't, I have to choose what, what do I cover? Is it food or rent? According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, a year later, 35 million people struggled with hunger in 2019. When they close the books on 2020, the number is expected to be 50 million people. And there is this. Numbers crunched by both Northwestern University researchers and the Brookings Institute show nearly 30% of households with children are food insecure. Do you want sour cream? That translates to nearly 14 million kids. I never dreamed that we would be doing this on a regular basis. People are just in more need uh, these days than in normal times because of the pandemic. I have uh, a family of disabilities and so does he. So we're trying to um, come together and help each other. Um, and it's because of the COVID, the reason why we have had a decrease in income to provide for our families efficiently. The Central Texas Food Bank in Austin, the state capital, serves 21 counties. There are 400,000 food insecure people in the area. I love what you guys are doing and thank you so much for coming out and helping. Derek Chubbs is president and CEO. They feed about 50,000 people every week. 30% more than before the pandemic. If there's anything that worries me relative to, relative to continuing to meet this demand is how much we're having to pay for food. Uh, contextually, pre-COVID, the Central Texas Food Bank spent about $100,000 a month to purchase food. Over the last few months, we're spending a million dollars a month to purchase food. Every bit of the increase, Chubb says, is the result of the economic crisis and job loss in the United States caused by the pandemic. There is a misconception, he says, that most food bank clients are homeless. 93% of their clients are not. That's the classic profile that we see. And here in Central Texas, we like to say that the face of hunger isn't what you think. It's not automatically homeless. It's not automatically unemployed. What worries Chubbs is that even as the pandemic wanes, food insecurity will linger on as the economy steadies and jobs slowly come back. It might be 2022 or worst case, 2023, before the number of people needing assistance falls to pre-COVID levels. What breaks my heart are those people that are embarrassed to come and they drop their heads, but we try and lift them up to let them know that they are just as important and we are going to be here for them no matter what. Back in Florida, it's a busy morning at the food bank. Ruthie Dickerson, a school crossing guard, is shopping the showroom for her church's food distribution supplies. The majority of the ones that we're getting now are new to this because they haven't had, they don't have a job. A lot of people are still out of work and children are home homeschooling, so they're needing food. Out back, volunteers are loading a truck to head out with supplies for the mobile pantry in High Springs. Each pallet is weighed first. Today, the food bank is getting 14,000 pounds, 17 pallets. This is as raw as you get. This is a food bank, and we feed to all the pantries, the soup kitchens, the churches, Catholic charities for their backpack programs. We provide all of the food. How much, if you had to guess, how many people do you think your food reaches? Well, if you look at the, we can do it by meals, because we don't know the people count, because uh, we're not out there seeing them and, and accounting for it, but the 18 million pounds of food was 15 million meals right here in these five counties. And you don't see the need at this point lessening at all. Not in the near future. At the High Springs Pantry, Anna James and her team of volunteers just take it a week at a time. Florida has been hit hard. They see it up close. See, I'm telling you, it's different. 
It's it's so much more. There are people that come through this line that um, never would have thought that it had to come through this line. But unemployment is trending downward as 2020 closed out 659,000 people in the workforce were without jobs, about 6.5% compared to 900,000 back in April. Before the pandemic hit, the state was cruising along with unemployment below 3%. In Florida, the tourism industry is the heartbeat of the economy. Theme parks, cruise ships, hotels, restaurants. Tens of thousands of people who rely on the industry for jobs are now out of work and in food lines, all thanks to the pandemic. Hi, you have a blessing. For the families lined up here in High Springs, this week there won't be quite as much food in the boxes they get. So they'll get meat, bread, sweets, um, produce, dry goods, and today we happen to have some cookies to bake. The 17 pallets is about 10 less than usual. We're at the mercy of what we get. We, we're big on praying for uh, God to multiply like loaves and fish. So <laughs> we haven't been disappointed. I mean, we've always been able to feed every person that came here. We haven't had a time we couldn't feed every person that came. The line is long. Anna figures they'll feed about 700 families before they close at dark today. Yeah, you have a good one. Ray Faircloth has been coming here now for a few months. If it wasn't for these people, so sometimes we got a choice. Either pay all of our light bill or part of our light bill. Because we have to eat, you know. And, and, and this right here, for the community, is the best, the best thing they can do. Our real mission is to provide food and hope. So, what you look at, everybody thinks of us as providing food, but what we really do is we provide hope for the souls of these people. They know somebody cares. You have a great day. You too. Well, we'll be open next Wednesday. Okay, we'll see you then. Love you. Yeah.